2.1 represent relations and functions. In this picture we have a function machine and you're going to find out later what this is all about. All right, let's start with the definition of a relation. What is a relation? It pairs the input values with the output values. Okay, so whatever you put in is paired with an output value. Pairing of input values with output values. And the domain or the input values usually are denoted with the x and that is called our independent variable. And then we say that our range or our output values, they're normally denoted with the y on our x, y axis and those are the dependent variables. And it's easy to think about the dependent variable as depending on whatever the x is. So, you know, think about in science, for example, you might put time on this axis and you might put distance on this axis. Well, the distance that you traveled depends on the time in these ordered pairs here. These are our x paired with our y's. You can also represent it with a table matching all the inputs to the output. And the third way that we're going to represent it is through a graph. So let's consider this relation, the points 4, 2, 1, 1, 3, negative 1, and 0, 5. What is the domain? Well, the domain would be all the x-coordinates, and I'll put them in order from lowest to highest. That would be 0, 1, 3, and 4. Okay, and I put this in set notation. This is saying that the domain is the set of 0, 1, 3, and 4. And you just put that in those squiggly braces. We call these braces. Right, and don't forget, if there's two points that both have a 1 as their x-coordinate, you wouldn't write the 1 twice. You're just listing the numbers that are in the domain. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, what's the range? The range in order would be negative 1... 1, 2, and 5. Okay, and here we don't have any repeats, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's represent it with a graph. We're just going to plot the points, so you know how to do that. 4, 2 is 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2. 1, 1. 1, 2, 3, negative 1. And 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. That's about it for that one. What is a function? A function is a special kind of relation. It's a relation for which each input value has exactly one output value. Has exactly one, that's the key thing, exactly one output value. How does this go back to that function machine that we saw on the first slide? What we're doing is we're putting in our independent variable. When we put that x in, we are assured, because it is a function machine, that only one y value will drop out, never more than one. So if you put in one ball, only one ball should drop out. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's see what that means. Okay. Let's tell whether this relation is a function. So we have a negative 2 going in, a 2 pops out. We have a 0 going in, a 3 pops out. A 1 going in, a negative 1 pops out. A 3 going in, and a negative 1 pops out. Well, can the same number pop out when we put in two different numbers? Absolutely. That fits the definition. What's not okay? Aha. Let's look at this one. The negative 2 gives us a negative 2. But then we see a 1 gives us out two different answers. That 
cannot happen. So this is pretty much saying you put the one ball into the machine and it pops out a three and a negative one. Whereas in this example, think about it like you're putting in coins into a gumball machine or something. You put in a coin, you get out a red ball. You put in another coin, you can get out another red ball. That's okay. It's just not okay if you put in one coin and you get out a red ball and a green ball. So that's no. Another way that we can tell whether or not a relation is actually a function is by the vertical line test. If it passes the vertical line test, meaning that you run a vertical line through the graph and it only hits everywhere at one point, never more than one point, then this is a function. However, if my vertical line ever hits more than once, then no, it is not a function. And again, in this example, you can see you put in a certain x value, you have two different y's assigned to the same x value. Exactly. This x value pops out two different y values. All right, i equals 2x minus 3. What is the x? The independent variable. That's our independent variable. And our y? The dependent variable. Because it depends on what x you put in. Depending on what x you put in, a different y will pop out. So it depends on. And x, y is a solution if? It has to make the equation true when you plug in the values. So that's saying all points that actually work when you plug them in. That's all it's saying. All right, let's graph this by using a table. First of all, let's choose our x values wisely. And by that, I mean we don't really want to deal with fractions here. So good numbers to choose for x might be, all right, let's do 0. What else would be a good one so that we didn't have a fraction? Well, I like to pick, if I can, a negative and a positive. Okay. So Having a 4 will make the 4's cancel out, so I pick a negative 4 and a positive 4. All right, and I kind of put that 0 in the middle, thinking the same thing mm -hmm. you were thinking. And what else would I be able to multiply by there to not get a fraction? Any multiples of 4, so I could do 8, 12, but Let's points. go with negative yep. 8 and 8. Good. Okay. All right, and if you put in a negative 8, what do you get out? Well, negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, plus 2 is? Negative 4. All right, put in a negative 4, we get negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, plus 2 is? Negative 1. Put in a 0, that's easy, you get out of 2. Put in a 4, you would get, those would cross out, you would get 3 plus 2 is? 5. Put in an 8, you would get 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 2 is? 8. 8. All right, let's plot these. Negative 8, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, oops, eight, one, two, negative four, one, two, three, four, negative one, zero, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, and I have plenty of points there to make my line. And I am graphing a line here, not just points, because anything along this line is a solution. Linear functions, when we graph the function in question three, we saw it was a graph of a line. In fact, all functions of the form, what are linear functions? Y equals mx plus b. And remember how I said in chapter one that because the exponent here is just a one, that's why it's linear. Again, we call this the slope. We call this the y-intercept. And any equation of the line can be written in y equals mx plus b form. And, I, and we should also say that if we want to write this in function notation, we should say f of x instead of y. So f of x equals mx plus b. And remember how we were saying this is just saying that the function is dependent on x. Again, this is y. This is the independent variable, and this is the dependent variable, or f of x. All right. Okay. Tell whether the function is linear. Well, is the power associated with the x1? Nope, it isn't. So, nope, it's not nope. linear. How about this one? It is. It 
Question five, the length L in inches that a spring stretches when a weight up to 20 pounds is attached is given by L of W, W is our independent variable, equals 1 12th W plus two, where W is the weight in pounds. What is the domain of the function? That means what are the possible X, or in this example, W values? And that is the domain, W or the weight in pounds would be the domain of the function. And in this particular problem, um, you can only have a weight up to 20 pounds. Therefore, the domain would be from 0, not including 0, up through 20, including 20. Okay, because our weight can't be zero, and it's got to be less than or equal to 20. What is the range of the function? The range would be all the values we could get out. So those would be and they the, will length be the length in inches. In inches. So we won't get a 2 because that means that we didn't put any weight. So let's, let me just write it out here. B. So the smallest possible W we could have had was 0. If W equals 0, mm -hmm. okay, that's saying that we're doing L of 0, that would be 1 12th times 0 plus 2, which equals 2. So that's the smallest it could be, not including because we didn't include 0 less than L, which is less than, and the biggest possible one we could have is if W was equal to 20. I don't even need to write that because I could just write L of 20, and that equals 1 12th times 20 plus 2, which is equal to 11 thirds. 11 thirds. So our length is somewhere between 2 and 11 thirds. What is the length of the spring when a 10 pound weight is attached? So that would be finding L of 10. And that's just going to be 1 12th times 10 plus 2. 10 twelfths is 5 sixths plus 2. So that's just going to be 2 and 5 six In inches. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.